Hey guys, Sam here from Technology Edic, and today we're comparing two different iPhones, the iPhone 5 and the iPhone 4. So you may be wondering why I'm comparing these two different iPhones. I mean, they're two generations apart. Well, the iPhone 5 is most likely the upgrade option for people on a 24-month contract with the iPhone 4. So I thought I'd compare them and see if it really is worth upgrading to the iPhone 5 from the iPhone 4 and what the major differences are. So, let's get started. So I'm looking at the two iPhones here, and the first thing you notice is the iPhone 5 has a much bigger screen than the iPhone 4. It's a whole half an inch taller. So with this screen, this the iPhone 4 has a 3 to 2 aspect ratio, whereas the iPhone 4 has a 16 by 9 uh, HD aspect ratio. Uh, so with this, it means the iPhone 5 is optimised for watching movies that are in that aspect ratio, which is 1080p movies, uh, or 720p you know, HD movies. Um, you won't have black bars, whereas with the iPhone, you'll notice that you will have black bars uh, on either side. Uh, they're both actually retina displays, however, because the iPhone 5 has a taller screen, uh, there are more pixels, um, but they both have the same pixel density of 326 ppi. Uh, while they may look similar, the iPhone 5 has a redesigned body. Um, as you can sort of see they do look similar, they've got a slightly similar design. Um, you can see the home button on the top there. Uh, and the headphone ports on the iPhone at the top, whereas it's on the bottom uh, with the iPhone 5. But with the iPhone 5, it has uh, sort of new colours. And so if you choose the black slash slate model, which I have here, you can see that the side is uh, slate all the way around, whereas with the iPhone 5, it's actually uh, aluminium. Um, and then also with the white iPhone, um, it looks different also. And you can also just, just also on that note, you can see uh, the iPhone 5 is actually a lot thinner than the uh, iPhone 4. In fact, it's a whole 18% thinner, and also 22% lighter than the iPhone 5, uh, the iPhone 4. And another thing you can notice that's different about them is around the iPhone 5, where the screen connects with the um, outside layer, um, there's kind of a diamond cut or something, and you can see uh, sort of it's like a curve around the outside. Um, with the iPhone 4, there is sort of that, but it's not as pronounced as in the iPhone 5. Antenna on the iPhone 5 is a lot different to the iPhone 4. You, don't, you remember in the iPhone 4, uh, you could you hold it like this, and um, it put down your reception a lot. Um, and I have noticed this issue when I, when I was using my iPhone 4. Um, and so obviously with the iPhone 4S, and therefore with the iPhone 5, this issue's been rectified, and there's no longer an issue where holding it like that causes your signal to drop out. I actually do hold my iPhone like that, so um, I have had calls drop out because of that. Um, in terms of the SIM card, in the iPhone 5, there is a nano SIM tray, um, which is a bit smaller than the micro SIM uh, found in the iPhone 4. Finally, the other hardware change that um, is probably one of the most significant changes is the um, change from the old 30 pin dock connector to the new uh, lightning cable. Uh, which is very very small and fits in and is reversible. Uh, it is an upgrade, definitely, but it is a very expensive cable. Um, just recently they've cracked some cables, so hopefully they should come down cheaper on eBay, etc. Uh, but the cables are very expensive and likely a lot of your adapters and previous cables that you have, well, obviously they won't work if they've got the 30 pin dock connector. Um, and Apple's whole range has been updated for the lightning cable, so clearly they've got uh, money on this new thing and um, yeah. Unless you're not going to upgrade to Apple devices in the future, you're just going to have to deal with this, unfortunately. In the iPhone 4, you have a single core A4 processor, but in the iPhone 5, there is a dual core A6 processor. Um, the, the A6 processor um, goes up to a higher clock speed than the 800 megahertz or around that that the um, iPhone 4 was sort of clocked at. Uh, in terms of cellular connectivity, the iPhone 4 uh, supported 3G, etc. The iPhone 5 now supports HSPA Plus and dual carrier HSPDA. Quite a mouthful. Uh, also in the iPhone 5, one of the biggest features is the 4G slash LTE. Um, and this brings up huge speeds. It's 49.01, uh, which is five times faster than ADSL2 Plus. So there you go. Moving on, um, the iPhone 4 doesn't support the dual band wireless. So basically it doesn't support five gigahertz wireless signals, whereas the iPhone 5 uh, does support that. 
Um, the iPhone 5 has Bluetooth 4.0, whereas the iPhone 4 just had Bluetooth 2.1 plus EDR. Um, and on the same sort of note, uh, the iPhone 4S and 5 now su also support uh, GLONASS, which is a location system uh, developed by Russia. Uh, the iPhone uh, 5 has two hours more 3G browsing time, so if you're on the internet on 3G, it will last for nine hours as, op nine hours as opposed to seven hours. However, you will notice between the iPhone 5 and the iPhone 4, the iPhone 4 has 75 hours more standby time uh, when compared to the iPhone 5. Um, and I have sort of noticed this, that um, the iPhone 5 does seem to discharge quicker and I'm finding myself running out of batteries at around 3.30 um, at the end of the day as opposed to you know 9 o'clock with the iPhone 4. There's quite a big difference there. Um, in terms of charging, the iPhone 5 actually does charge, um, I found, I reckon it charges faster than the iPhone 4. Um, whether that's put down to the lightning cable or just that my iPhone 4 battery charges slower now that it's older. And the final difference between them in, in the internals is you can upgrade the iPhone 4 to a 64 gig capacity. Uh, the iPhone, sorry, you can upgrade the iPhone 5 to a 64 gig capacity. Uh, the iPhone 4 only went up to 32 gigabytes. Looking at the camera, the camera on the um, iPhone 4 was 5 megapixels. Um, in the iPhone 5, the camera has been upgraded to 8 megapixels. Uh, this means you have 3 megapixels more, um, more pixels, obviously. Um, and you can also film in 1080p HD. Now, I think, oh, as opposed to the iPhone 7, the iPhone 4 720p uh, H HD's um, filming. Now, if you look at the current iPad, there is um, they're currently using a 5 megapixel camera and you can do 1080p video recording Now that 5 megapixel camera was the same one on the iPhone 4 so I think there is potential um, whether, I don't know, by jailbreak or some modification for the iPhone 4 to actually film in 1080p HD The front facing camera uh, on the iPhone 4 was VGA quality 480p whereas on the iPhone 5 it's been upgraded to an HD uh, FaceTime camera which is 720p Obviously one day I'd like to see that at 1080p and I think we'll see that within the next iteration of iPhone. The final difference is in the aperture of the back of the camera, um, in, the, in the rear facing camera. On the iPhone 4 is f, an f-stop of f2.8, whereas on the iPhone 5 it was f2.4. Finally we'll look at the software. Um, the iPhone 5 obviously has all the software, all the um, features rather, of iOS 6, whereas the iPhone 4 is lacking in a couple of areas. Uh, the iPhone 4 doesn't have Siri, rather it has this strange voice control guy. Just like that, and it doesn't really work. So with that same voice thing, um, Siri actually powers voice navigation with the new Maps app. Um, so obviously the iPhone 4 doesn't have this, so you still have to read off the screen. It could be a safety hazard, but anyway, they didn't include that. The iPhone 4 also within the Maps app doesn't have 3D slash flyover maps. In the camera app, the iPhone 4 does not have uh, panorama mode, nor does it have face detection, and the iPhone 4 can't support made for iPhone hearing aids. Finally, with the iPhone 4, you can actually do FaceTime over cellular. That's a feature limited to the 4S and the iPhone 5. So hopefully this uh, comparison was useful to you. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit the like button down there. Um, and also check out our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash technologetic. Uh, just like that and there will be some exclusive content there coming up in the near future. Also if you haven't already follow us on Twitter which is twitter.com slash Thanks for watching.